This past year, the person that I had the pleasure of introducing tonight made headlines when he spoke his truth to the world. He said in a beautiful and heartfelt essay that being gay was amongst the greatest gifts that God had given him. And there's no doubt in my mind that his courage and those words has saved lives. When the LGBT community faced a wave of more than 120 anti-LGBT bills across nearly 30 states that target us simply because of who we are, how God made us, Tim Cook spoke up again. The company he leads today was one of the first in the nation to endorse the Equality Act. And time and time again, Tim has been willing to use his powerful voice for remarkable good, to lift up those in our community who need it the most. And that's why we are proud, we are so proud to honor him tonight with the HRC Visibility Award. Tim grew up in the South, a native Alabamian. Alabama's in the house. And while California is a long way from the Bible Belt, the values instilled in him from an early age, integrity, decency, and treating people with the respect they deserve that's at the core of who he is. I've gotten to know Tim over these past few years, and I've learned that he feels passionately about leaving this world a better place than he found it. It's what he calls his true north. And as a result of his leadership, Apple today is rightly credited with some of the most impactful practices in the world when it comes to consumer privacy environmental responsibility and diversity and inclusion. Tim's courage, his career, and his leadership at Apple show LGBTQ young people that they can and should dream as big as their minds will allow. Now let's take a look at what some of his friends and colleagues have to say about him. Welcome back, everybody. My next guest is the CEO of Apple and one of Time Magazine's most influential people of 2015. Please welcome Mr. Tim Cook. You yourself came out as gay recently. Was that an upgrade or just a feature that had not been turned on? <laughs> He's cool. Tim is a true champion for all people. Knowing that the leader of the company that I work for, the boss's 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 boss, is advocating for the rights of those who have been disenfranchised makes me beyond proud. Thank you. I know Tim is a courageous person, a person who has spoken truth to power, and a person who uh, wants to live the values that mean the most to him. Everyone deserves a basic level of human rights, regardless of their color, regardless of their religion, regardless of their sexual orientation, regardless of their gender. There's resonance when an important personality like a corporate leader speaks up on an issue, but when you're the head of the largest company and the most innovative company and probably the most culturally significant company in the world, the most followed company in the world, it resonates so much more widely. It's about finding your values and committing to live by them. Tim sacrificed his own privacy to ensure a generation of young people will understand that they matter whoever they are. People are drawn to authenticity. People are drawn to people who are true to themselves. I may not like it, I may not like you, but you know what? I like that you're standing for something. When you have someone like a Tim Cook saying, that's who I am, 
It gives people strength and courage. The whole point of being vulnerable in this way is to inspire others to, to be vulnerable too. And for Tim to, in such a beautiful way, embrace himself, it gives everyone else permission to embrace themselves. I think he's a great CEO and he do make Apple different. And it's not bad to be different. Cause this is our time. Tim being very honest with the world about who he is definitely challenges the status quo. And I think that examples like Tim give people hope. I just keep thinking of my experience as a kid growing up and trying desperately to find someone that I could aspire to be. I didn't have anyone. And today, kids around the world have Tim. Tim, from the bottom of my heart, congratulations. On behalf of my family, congratulations on this great honor. Tim, congratulations. This is an honor well deserved. From all your friends in the heart of Dixie, congratulations. I'd like to take one photo of you, because this is the best view in the world. We ain't seen nothing yet. The best is yet to come when it comes to Tim and what he's going to do and the impact he's going to have in so many areas. This is our time. Now please join me in welcoming this year's HRC Visibility Award recipient, Apple CEO Tim Cook. Thank you. Thank you. I love to see the iPhones. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Chad, for that incredibly generous introduction and for everyone in that video. My, you really tugged on my heart. Thank you. And Chad, thank you even more for your incredible leadership of the Human Rights Campaign. You've been president for what, three years? And think what happened in those three years. A bold initiative with Project One America in the South. The right to marriage equality, grounded in the Constitution and upheld by the Supreme Court. And even a rainbow flag projected on the White House. Chad, I can't wait to see what you have planned for your number four. And Vice President Biden, thank you for your kind words. It is an honor to share this stage with you tonight. You showed tremendous political courage on the question of marriage equality, and no one in this room or this country will ever forget it. I'm honored to be here this evening, and I am proud to be a part of this community. I also want to recognize my coworkers here tonight from Apple. They represent the many talented people who make up our company, more than 100,000 individuals from all walks of life, who are dedicated to making the best products on earth and who believe in leaving the world better than we found it. We do that through our products and through our policies. And we do that through our partnerships like with organizations like the HRC. We've been proud to stand with you in the fight for equal rights. We were proud to stand with you against a wave of pro-discrimination bills. And we were proud to celebrate with you on that momentous ruling in June. 
It was a rare and special moment to watch our nation turn back a page in the history book. It marked a victory for equality, for perseverance, and for love. It also inspires us to keep up the fight. Last year around this time, as some of you might remember, I wrote an essay that was deeply personal. I wanted to lend my voice to people who might not be ready to exercise theirs. It was an open letter to the public, but it was addressed most of all to everyone who had been rejected by their friends or communities or even their families simply because of who they are. I'll tell you, I did not do it for attention. I'm a private person by nature. Growing up, I was taught that you distinguish yourself in life by what you do, not by what you say or how loudly you say it. But sometimes, you just have to be loud. Because people need to hear that being gay is not a limitation. People need to hear that being gay doesn't restrict your options in life. People need to hear that you can be gay or transgender and be whatever, you, whatever else you want to in life. A CEO or a senator, an Olympic athlete, an award-winning actor or actress, an amazing husband, wife, father, mother. I thought that was a message worth sharing. The response over the past year has been overwhelming, and I've been deeply humbled by it. I've heard from people of all ages, all over the world, in all kinds of circumstances, some struggling with how to open up, others wishing they could do more to help their loved ones. Some people have written and said it's the first time they've discussed their sexual orientation with anyone. Some wrote to say they had always thought there was a glass ceiling they'd never break through in their careers. Many have shared stories, painful stories, of feeling less than, other than, left out, pushed out. They are all stories that all of us know, for they are our stories Two. Some of the most touching notes I've received are from parents who love their children more than anything and can't bear to see them struggle for acceptance. Some of the most hopeful notes are from folks who are just happy to see the world changing for the better. I want to share one of them with you tonight from a man in Oregon, a Vietnam veteran. He wrote, Tim, I hope that someday people will look at announcements such as yours and greet them with a yawn. We should simply accept people for who they are as citizens, for being good human beings, and for enhancing our lives and doing their best. Isn't that the American way? It is, of course. It's profoundly American, but it's still, in so many ways, an aspiration. We are closer than ever to the day that Dr. Martin Luther King dreamed of, when his children would only be judged by the content of their character. But that day is not here yet, because 31 states, more than half the stars on our American flag, have no laws to protect gay and transgender people from discrimination. No state legal protection from being fired or evicted because of who you are or who you love. That day is not here yet because kids are still being told they'll never amount to anything or get sent to reparative therapy for a cure or get bullied to the brink of suicide or get pushed into believing they're somehow defective when they're just the way that God made them. 
That day is not here yet when some people claim exemption from what's written in the Constitution that no state shall deny Americans the equal protection of the laws. That day is not here. Last year, I wrote that being gay is a gift, or as Stephen Colbert put it, a feature. <laughs> I don't know about you, but it has given me, through my life experience, tremendous insight and empathy for the struggles of other groups marching for equality. Because goodness knows, the LGBT community is not the only one facing inequalities at work, or at school, or in renting an apartment, or adopting a child. The way I look at this is simple. Discrimination against anyone holds everyone back. Everyone. And as all of us know, Discrimination doesn't simply fade. It doesn't recede of its own accord. It has to be pushed back, challenged, overcome, and then kept at bay. That requires determination. That requires vigilance. And HRC has a great deal of both. I said earlier that partnership was essential. And that is certainly true in the next phase of this fight. We don't yet know which civil rights struggles are on the horizon, but we do know that for equality to triumph, it's going to take advocates and activists like HRC and global companies like Apple. We all have a role. At Apple, we'll continue to play our role by remaining open to everyone regardless of where they come from, what they look like, how they worship, or who they love. We will continue to create products that empower people and bring them together, and continue to pursue policies that advance inclusion and diversity. And we will continue to partner with you. So I urge everyone here tonight to keep talking, keep pushing, and yes, keep fighting for a world where everyone is treated equally. For together, we will pave the sunlit path to justice. Thank you very much for this generous award. Thank you. Thank you.